Well, good morning. We're looking at Proverbs 23, verses 19 through 21 this morning, and we're looking at saying 15 of the 30 sayings that are given. Now, we're halfway through uh, those with this saying, and it's three verses. Uh, here, he's going to be talking about self-control. Self-control, because he's going to be talking about drunkards and gluttons. And so I'm just kind of wrapping it up and saying, you know, in the principle there, there's this idea of being self-controlled. So listen to what it says. Hear, my son, and be wise, and direct your heart in the way. Be not among drunkards or among gluttonous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the glutton will come to poverty, and slumber will clothe them with rags. So notice what he is saying. He's saying that really you need to, first of all, hear my son and be wise. So a wise person, he says, direct your heart. So don't give in to your heart, but direct your heart. Set your heart towards the things that will be wise, that will bring about riches. And I don't think he's necessarily talking about money, but that certainly does play a part. Notice here he says that we are to be wise and to direct our heart in the way. What way? The way that God desires him to go. The way that is what he has just ta been talking about with the other um, 14 sayings and the, the future uh, 15 sayings. Um, here he says that we are called to direct our heart in the way. And one of the things is that we need to be under self-control. And in being under self-control, he says, don't be around the drunkards and the gluttons and the eaters of meat. Uh, now, I think in our culture, uh, we look at drunkenness as certainly as a bad thing, but not so much the gluttony. And that's why I chose self-control, because uh, both of them lead towards one another. That you can have a, a drink, but it's being doing it in ex excess. You can have a, uh, some food, but it's doing it in excess. And uh, so he's saying, don't be among the drunkards who have no self-control and give into these things. So the result here, he says, is poverty. I, I think that it's poverty in a couple different ways. First of all, it's poverty uh, just financially. Um, even for people who are wise, uh, and are drunks, it is hard for them to fully operate at maximum capacity because they don't have self-control. Uh, for, the, for the glutton here, uh, I, I just want you to think about probably what he's talking about, uh, that his food rev or his life revolves around food. Uh, just think about it for a minute. Uh, have you ever gone to a buffet? Well, I know in you know, these times, nobody's going to a buffet. But uh, in the past, have you ever gone to a buffet or think about Thanksgiving dinner when you eat and you eat so much? How do you feel after you've eaten a ton of food? Do you feel real energetic, ready to go out there and run? Or are you slowed down? You're, you're tired. You just want to, you know, go to sleep or whatever. Here, he, he is saying that this is, this is how you will feel. You will be slumber. You will have slumber clothing you as rags clothe you. You're asleep. You're out of it. You're not productive. And so somebody that is a drunk, somebody that is a glutton is not going to, first of all, be able to uh, do well financially. Remember, these are just general uh, teachings. Uh, but here he, he is saying that this is a warning, something we need to be warned against. Now, what is interesting is I don't think that it just simply means poverty with wealth, but rather he's talking about being rich in wisdom. Uh, if you're drunk all the time, if you are uh, always consumed with food and a glutton, then how in the world are you going to have the resources to pursue God, to pursue him through his word. You know, it's really hard to read the Bible when you're drunk. It's hard to read the Bible and to understand when you're high. It's hard to read the Bible when you've eaten so much, you're asleep, 
The, the idea here is it's hard to gain wisdom when you're incapacitated. And so he says, you need to be wise, direct your heart in such a way that you're going to be able to take in the word of God, become rich and wealthy, because having wisdom is being rich. And so I think that's what he's talking about. You know, one of the fruit of the Spirit, I was talking with my wife about this recently. We were talking uh, on, our, on our trip, and we were just, I was just telling her, you know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. And I was just thinking in my own life how that's just something that I just really want to have more of. The, just more self-control, self-control over all kinds of things. Uh, and it's, it's difficult. It is hard. And I think that's one of the things that he's saying is that if you want to have self-control, one of the fruits of the Spirit, the evidence of the Spirit, that you will have self-control. To Don't be around the drunkards and the gluttonous and those. Just resist that. There's that temptation. Oh, go and hang out. And then they're going to lead you down the wrong path. Just don't do it. And so we want to be people who are wise and who direct our heart, aim our heart in a way that is going to be pleasing to the Lord, having self-control so that we can walk in a way that brings glory to Him. Well, I hope that this, this 15th saying will, uh, is an encouragement to you and you can use it to glorify the Lord. We'll see you next time.